welcome back to the playground. My name is MJ. Today we're reacting to the Eminem and Sway interview part one. You guys requested it and I'm definitely interested in seeing what's going on in his head, especially after listening to that diss. So I am ready to press play. If you guys are ready, definitely give me a thumbs up and let's press play. Oh, oh, oh. Y'all ready to be history? All right, hey, there we go. We're out of here. All right, let's go, that's it. We're out of here. Sway. Yes. So before we get started, I love his speaking voice. Will you please sign us? Oh, 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 shit! Damn! Wow! Oh, wow! Look at how yo, you look, look like at a that. kid. You're a kid there. Damn, man! I'm Can we just talk man. about the quality though? Is this what 4K looks like? It's really nice. And let's talk about the fact that he is still so humble. It takes a level of humility to still be able to be like, I'm Eminem, but I want your autograph. Okay, sorry. Crazy. I'm sorry, teenage years. Y'all didn't know I had bars once once upon a time, right? <laughs> yeah, you want me to say Marshall? You want me to say? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. I love his speaking voice. That's H-A-L-L. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Look Hell yeah. That's signed a, a vinyl for him. Man, look at that, man. Look at that. Incredible. Yo, you yes, see yeah, man. Your signature's so much better than mine. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, yeah, you threw me off with that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck up your whole shit. Not really. Uh, I'm just impressed that you dug that deep in the crates, man. I didn't know you exactly in the crates. Uh, that's good to know, man. That's good yeah. to know. Do you want to use any lyrics from any of those songs in that final? Well, that, that, I was going to ask you when the cameras are off. <laughs> bars that I wish I could have. Yeah, that's oh, cool, man. man. Go there, man. What's, up? What's mine is yours, man. If, it, if it'll make your shit tighter, you know. Let's speak on bars, though. Yeah, we are. Uh, Kamikaze came out. Mm -hmm. You know, you shocked the world the way you did it. Yeah, what, did. What, what made you do it? I mean, a revival came out December 2017. That wasn't that long ago. It was less than right. a year. What made you just drop it on the world the way you did? Because he was sick of it. He was sick of all you guys getting on his back. I'm sorry, I stopped it to really say that I'm really liking the facial hair, Marshall. It's working for you. Because I feel like, I feel like the way the climate is right now, hmm. if you give people if you give people enough time to, I'll get an album coming out in two months. You give people time to say, man, he better have a song like this or I ain't fucking with it. Right? He better have a song like this or I ain't fucking with That's it. That's true. He better not be rapping like this. He better not be rapping about this. Right. Or I'm not going to fuck with it. And when right. you go into an album, you go into anything with the mindset of, this is going to suck. Right. And then even if, if even if you kind of don't feel that way, you're already kind of formed your opinion in front of all your friends mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like, I feel like um, giving them no warning was the best thing to do yeah. just because it doesn't give people enough time to have their preconceived. The revival track came down the pipe. Real. Yeah, I remember that. It was like overwhelmingly this shit is going to be trash. Yeah. Right. And how is that? Where did people get that idea from anyway? Like, I'm really interested in listening to Revival now. I'm not gonna do reactions to it, but I'm gonna listen. Uh, well, I would if you guys want me to, but I would like, just personally, I wanna hear what that album sounds like because I just really, I keep hearing from you guys that it actually wasn't trash. It was just like some deep, dark, internal stuff and the world wanted bang, bang, shoot, shoot, pow, pow, I guess. And that was beautiful. nobody really wanted to be wrong about it. Yeah. Mm. I'm not saying everybody, but that's, a lot of people had already had, you that's know, the point. formed their opinions. So they stuck to it. Yeah, that was interesting. That's what it like, is. The Bible really got ran through the ringer, so to speak, uh, before it even got off the ground. Right. Uh, but you know, it, it, this is that day and age. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, how have you adjusted to that? Like before. Which is what I find interesting about you. Before you spent your whole career being critiqued and criticized mm -hmm. by organizations like LGBTQ community or right. college campuses or yeah. police. Guys, also because I don't. I mean, I, I think it's important for me not to just ignorantly and blindly be screaming ah, Slim Shady. I mean, of course, I only know Eminem as the artist, right? But and I know a few good number of his songs. I followed him in the beginning of his career, and a lot of you guys are saying that, oh yeah, he doesn't support the LGBTQ plus community and all of this stuff. So what's going on? Then you guys are talking about the Miley Cyrus issue. What's tea? What's the real tea? Because, like I said, all that stuff. 
And this has nothing to do with being a stand. All of it is just, I, I'm like this with all celebrities. I really don't, I don't follow them that minus, minusculely, if that's a word, minutely, whatever. Departments, you know, but hip hop always stood by you. So that was, yeah. you know, that's where you found your refuge. That's but now true. it came from inside. Yeah. You know, how did that affect you? Me Hurt. sitting back and, and seeing things that I saw, it was kind of like, I felt like, I felt a bunch of different ways. I felt like, okay, maybe because it doesn't sound like everything else. Mm. And That's what, what I was saying earlier. Um, what most people are doing, mm -hmm. maybe that was what tainted their ear. Right. Because I remember a time in hip hop where you had to be so different from the next person mm. or you were trapped. Right. There's a shift uh, Taking somewhere place that now. happened that if it doesn't sound like everything else, then it's trash. Trash. Right? That's real. And I just said back like, okay. But okay, let me stop him. That feels like music period, right? Like I feel like that's how music is. A lot of the stuff, this is what I'll keep talking about with groupthink. A lot of the stuff is just, it's not just trash, it's not just hip hop. I think music in general, and just a lot of our culture is like this now. If it's, if this person doesn't dress like what you've seen, what's trending, if this music doesn't sound like what's trending, then it's not hot. So, that's how I'm feeling. Y'all know I've been on a music hiatus for years now, but that's kind of what I picked up, you know, on the way. All right, I can take that. It's not like I can't take constructive criticism, but I right. feel like it kind of went beyond constructive right. criticism. Right, it was just hateful. So I had to go back to it, and, and look, I had made albums that definitely probably would not be my the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Encore, okay. Relapse, which I believe Encore is a better album than Relapse. Relapse is something that I looked at a couple of years, went back to it and, and cringed at. See? At least you wasted no time in knowing the albums. You know I feel like as an artist it's important for you to be honest with yourself too, right? <laughs> and he wasted no time naming the ones that he felt were not like in the good light, but he obviously doesn't think revival was that bad, but. Oh, also, for those of you who are complaining about the echo, I already addressed this three videos ago. Please go catch up. I just moved into a new place. I'm working on it, okay? Furniture is coming. I'm working on it. Thanks. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize I was doing that many accents. I, was, like, I just started, for whatever reason, I just got into it and was just like, started on this weird serial killer vibe kind of thing yeah. and started wanting to talk crazy and started bending words more and the only way you can bend them, bend them is with this accent trying mm. to use this one like, and a couple years later I, you know in, in, in making recovery and slipping out of that getting out of the accents and beyond it um make recovery yeah. he's very and like I always say that if it wasn't for relapse i wouldn't have been able to make recovery and if it wasn't with, if it wasn't for revival, I wouldn't have been able to make this out. Hmm. So it just, you know, some people. What a good perspective. Went a little, went a little far with it. A little far. I think he's a very introspective person because you notice that he's not completely saying like that he's above criticism. He's pretty much saying like some of the stuff that y'all say I already know, but y'all took it a little extreme, you know. Oh, well, I, I want to get into that. Um, uh, too. And I almost, you know, when I listen to Kamikaze and I hear some people say, man, that's the vintage M we wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we wanted Shady back, mm -hmm. right? And when I listen to it, man, I, I have to admit, man, I hear something in you on this album that kind of made me rejoice <laughs> in the way I've done okay, uh, sweat. in the past. I like the fact that you're not running from the criticism. I like the fact yes. that in this digital age, you're not, you know, cowering and, and reforming to what people think you should sound like or how people think you should act mm -hmm. and you're calling it out. Yeah. And I actually like some of these review shows that you see on YouTube and they take people's music yeah. and they have fun with it. I look at these kids and I, and I see us when we were young. I mm -hmm. see myself when I was younger before Absolutely. YouTube and we'd go through a G-Rap album and Oh, this was dope. That was dope. Yeah. Ah, okay. He's talking about us. Except I don't ever do album reviews, but I get where he's going. Okay. It's so interesting to see again what our situation has become because, like, we didn't have this back then. You know, we didn't have a two way street. It was you admiring or listening to or patronizing 
an artist, but it never came the other way for them to even see what your real reaction was. Unless when you're like in the middle of a crowd, a thousand fans screaming that person's name at a concert or something. So I am grateful for YouTube. It's a really, really good medium, I would say. My album, this is dope. Yeah. They just kind of doing that, right? Uh, and you address them. So you're that in tune, like in the, in the beginning of the ringer when you talk about if you critique, critique, critique me, you mm -hmm. know, you can make millions if I critique you. There's nothing I would do. Mm, yeah, that's real. Where it's like, it's like, um, you got, okay, so, so since the internet has become what the internet's become, mm -hmm. and since YouTube and all that, you've got so many, how can I say this? It's, it's almost like mm. not enough Indians, too many cheeks. <laughs> so well. it's like, um, somebody, everybody on the internet, in, in, in hip hop, especially, mm -hmm. is it seems like either a rapper, a DJ, a writer, a producer does something has something to do with it, and it's and, and I love the fact I love the fact that so many people now have been able to get on easier than it was for yes we, that's what I was saying back in the day because we didn't have that we didn't have this platform right so I appreciate the platform it's just keep it real now you've got now you've got people that not only are doing the same thing and they can do it better but you've got people who don't do anything mm. and are just critiquing it mm -hmm. so I said that Okay, let me address that if I go, because I didn't even know. Y'all didn't tell me. Y'all didn't tell me he was talking about these reviews. <laughs> but yes, um, I think this is the misconception a lot of people have with reviews. Hence why, if you guys, if you watch any of my reactions, even beyond this, right? Um, if I'm not feeling it, I tend to end it. People have gotten mad at me in the past. They're like, why are you being disrespectful? You don't want to watch the whole video. And I'm like, I'm not about to sit here and torture myself, but I'm also not about to put on a show for you guys if I'm not feeling something. And I'm also not about to sit here and, and spend t 12 hours talking about how trash it is. Hence why I kept skipping parts on the Machine Gun Kelly's disc, because I just, I feel like that it's a really a waste of effort. But also it's just like what he's saying. It's so easy for you to critique something that you can't do. Not saying that critique ever feels good anyway, but I think he feels like it's so cool for you to sit back and say, oh, that bar was dope, or this was that, and this was that, but what can you do? Can you rap behind the camera, sir? But there's also a misunderstanding that that is in essence what that person does. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. A lot of times when a person coaches something, they're probably not always the best at it. It's kind of like think about your manager at work. You, would you think that they could do your job as good as you do? Probably not. But that's not their place, if that makes any sense. So it's kind of how entertainment works. But that is also why I come from a perspective of like, hey y'all, let's watch this together, let me tell y'all what I think, versus I'm a music expert and I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, that, I don't cross that line. Okay, that's fine. People can talk crazy about me. That's fine. They should, they should uh, express themselves and they have a right to. Right. But I also get to say whatever the fuck I want about you now. Right. That's real. I'm, like I said, I'm good with revival. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't have made this album without that. That's yeah. real. And there is something, I'm not going to lie, there is something inside me that is a little more happy when I'm in it's like as much as I okay as bad as it feels mm. you know, to be there there's also something about it there's a rush of it that I like because it inspires me to say something bad well so you get in that weird area too where it's like oh he says he doesn't care about what anybody thinks about him but now he cares about what everybody thinks about him. There's a difference. I feel like people always get this stuff mixed up. If you say you don't care, that means like literally like you don't live your entire life trying to please people. But it doesn't mean that when people say things about you, especially when it's untrue, or if you feel like they're being a little too harsh, of course it gets to you. Even if it just makes you angry, you feel something. No, he's just saying he don't care. He'll say anything he wants about you if you say it about him because he doesn't care. Like, there's so many different mm. levels to not caring about shit. Right? You know there's saying? levels to this shit. It was interesting. It was mm. definitely interesting because I'm like, how fucking off is my view? Yeah. You know, Jesus Christ. Made you question yourself. Like, and then, and then it was interesting to watch the reaction of the Chloroseptic remix verse that I did 
you know, with two chains and I haven't yeah, heard that one. You guys told me to react to it. You touched on you guys formed your opinion just from a track. That's where I was at. Yeah. It, it, at that point in time, that's yeah. definitely where I was at. But I watched people going, Oh, why wasn't this on revival? Honestly, I probably, what if I said it was on revival? Yeah. You won't know because you didn't listen probably. That's real. But Okay, that's what I keep saying. I still haven't heard this album yet, but I feel like a lot of people, just like what y'all said about me with the MGK disc, I feel like um, a lot of you, a lot of people that are thinking that didn't were not already happy with Eminem's album did not listen to it with an open heart because they already had made their decision, as he said in the beginning, that it was going to be trash anyway. So they didn't, they wouldn't, they would have missed a lot, of, a lot of things. You know, they would have missed a lot of really good elements. I wish I could find this comment that one of you guys wrote like four videos ago, but you were literally schooling me on revival, and the person said something on the lines of like. Um, because it was just a different sound, but he really found that Eminem, this was one of his best uh, albums to him. Um, because of he allowed himself to be vulnerable and touch on certain subjects about him and his actual, like, uh, I don't know, not unresolved, but things that he basically was going through on the inside. So, anyway, that's, that's another story. I felt like, okay, I guess this is what people might want, because I'm always stuck in that what the fuck do people want? Like like you were saying that the old M is back and he's too old to be the old M. You can't do it. Like, no matter what, when I that. zig, I should have zagged. Mm. No matter what, you That's got right. half and half mm. every fucking single time. That's true. You, you kind of said That's that. True. You alluded to it in, in, in one of the songs where you said that you set the bar so high mm -hmm. that, you know, at this point, you know, uh, everything's considered a failure. That's like, true. You know, competing with yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you touch on it a lot in every song. Right. Well, not every song, but the majority of songs you touch on it, I appreciate. But I have to, like, the Joe Button thing is is uh, really interesting because that along with MGK, of course, is making a lot of noise out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it throws a lot of folks off. Hold on, let me get prepared. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, actually, I feel like this first part is about to end and they probably did it this way, but all right. Mm. Sorry, I needed to adjust myself to get ready for this part. Um, first, started commenting. Um, it was mixed reaction. Some people said it was disloyal. Some people said, man, he's entitled to his opinion. Mm -hmm. I would assume that obviously it got under your skin, considering the relationship you've had with him with Slaughterhouse. Yeah. How do you, how did, how do you describe your relationship with Joe Button? I knew it. Uh, you went in on MGK. You guys had a discrepancy. You know, you can go down to fucking Wormhole with YouTube and whatever, right? So wormhole. Machine Gun Kelly talks about Eminem's daughter, whatever, right? So, what the fuck? I'm not gonna watch that part because I already know it's coming in part two anyway, so there's no need for us to, because I'm getting hyped, I'm getting hyped. That was, that was very interesting. I'm definitely excited for part two. Apparently, there's a part four as well, so I'm gonna try to watch two and three tomorrow and then probably four on Monday. Cause I still have to watch um, Lucky You featuring Joy and Lucas, the music video. So if you guys enjoyed this reaction, definitely give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment below other videos that you'd like me to react to. If you're not already a part of our family, definitely join, we'd love to have you. We're having tons of fun on the playground. I'll see you guys when you know. Bye.